For those who prefer Linux or are simply curious about Linux and other open source technologies, this is Category 5 Technology TV. Episode number 295. Hi, honey, I'm home. Of Category 5 Technology <laughs> TV. Great to see you. It's Tuesday, the 14th of May, 2013. Indeed. 295 episodes in. Wow, you're we're, old. We're five weeks away from 300, folks. How cool is that? How are you doing, buddy? I am all right. I, Good to see you. I survived my birthday last Happy week. Happy birthday. We, we, we mentioned it on the air. I know you were sitting at home watching. Probably had a bowl of popcorn and a beer. Know, actually... Sorry, kids, but I wasn't. I, uh, you weren't. My daughter. Now I was expecting when she said, "Dad, my boyfriend and I are going to make dinner for you on your yeah. birthday." So I was all that sweet, all ready for craft dinner and hot dogs. Sweet. We had chicken cordon bleu. We had oh. vegetables, pasta, it was, and they made a cake. Wow. It was pretty darn impressive. You were spoiled, buddy. I was. Yeah, I was but, spoiled. Let's fix that. Uh-oh. You mentioned that, that all they can hear is your beard. All you can, well, it's a good beard. <laughs> Better than... <laughs> uh, I hope well, you had a good birthday. I we were thinking it. of you. Sasha and I. Well, were I thought about you guys, too. Yeah. I mean, geez. I could have been there instead of having this chicken cordon bleu. And I know. That was really sweet. <sighs> Sorry. Speaking of birthdays, next week is... Uh, or next tomorrow. Week, tomorrow. We're hanging around till midnight, and we're going to... We're going to celebrate yeah. Rachel Shue. Big birthday yeah. tonight at midnight. Yeah. So happy birthday to our good friend Rachel Shu. So send in all the gifts and presents and yeah. cards. Address them to me. Any checks make payable to Eric. <laughs> That's the, yeah. Well, what do you think? It's birthday season. Should, what do you got coming up? Should I tell them what's coming up in I'd the newsroom? I'd love to know. Love to know. Well, coming up in the newsroom, YouTube has launched a trial scheme for paid channels on its website. The International Space Station is jettisoning Windows in favor of Linux. Hmm. IBM has opened a new center in China built exclusively to code applications for Linux. Neat. And 25 of Scotland's busiest railway stations will soon offer free Wi-Fi access courtesy of the Scottish government. Okay. How oh, cool. Stick around. These stories are coming up later in the show. It is Retro Gaming Month here at Category 5 TV. If you haven't done it already, get over to our website, Category 5. Press up, up, left, right, down. And <laughs> you up, can blast. Up, left, yeah. right, down. Here you go. Pew, 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 pew. I'm literally, I'm, I'm this little flying thing. It doesn't it is, go pew. Well, that's me. That's me adding the sound effects. But you know that as you do this, oh. you will be, you'll be doing the same. You'll be going pew, pew. And the kids will be like, what are you doing? The wife is, what is what's going yeah, on? You know. I'm just having some retro gaming action fun here, my love. <laughs> That's what we do at Category5.tv. Now, this is pretty much your last chance because Retro Gaming Month is, is actually almost over, if you can believe it. I do retro gaming all the time. I play, yeah. you know, three-pitch softball. <laughs> I play hockey with pretty a real puck and wow. skates and real ice. Yeah, you get hurt and... <sighs> I haven't break any been teeth lately. for a while. No, no, no. no. All right. Well, what's the beard I broke up? had nothing to do with hockey. So. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, yes. Sorry. I recall the story. Yeah, um, we'll leave that alone. Yeah. 
so that's that's what we're doing on our website for Retro Gaming Month. We've had a lot of fun s- stuff uh, going on here on the show. You remember, uh, if you if you didn't catch it and you're into retro gaming, check out episode number 292, where uh, where Erica and myself actually sat down with a ColecoVision. From ni- wow. Straight out of 1982. That was awesome. Uh, but also, to celebrate Retro Gaming Month, we're going to go over to Google... Dot com, dot ca. Last week we were uh, showing you how to use Google Image Search and all this kind of stuff. Uh, so we're going to show you a little Easter egg here tonight on Google's website. So we're going to go An to Easter egg. Yeah, let's go to the Image Search. And in keeping with our theme of retro gaming, we're going to do a quick search on images. Okay, so we're on Google Images for Atari Breakout. There we go. There's our image search. Go for it, everybody. Head on over to Google Images and uh, do a search for Atari Breakout for a little more nostalgic gaming action. Oh, there you my. Have it. I also got a, a <laughs> great email <laughs> from Al Peck, one of our wonderful viewers, uh, who directed us al- also over to the Atari site. I'm going to actually I'm gonna punch this into my browser. Um, I've written it down here. So www.atari.com slash arcade slash... I love how it's still going. Uh, n- no slash actually after arcade. Crunchbang. So that's the hash explanation mark. Okay. Slash arcade slash Atari dash promo. And if I did that right... There we go. We're actually going to be able to load up the Atari Arcade and get some more, yes, some more retro gaming action. I like Missile s'mores. Command. Oh. Pong. <laughs> Super Breakout. Yars Revenge. Oh, asteroids. Asteroids. Centipede. Don't worry, folks. You don't have to remember that verbatim. I will actually, I'm going to copy and paste that into the chat room right now. Pardon me. And uh, that's done. And I'm also going to post a link for you in the show notes of episode number 295. You are such a good guy. We love our retro gaming. What can I say? So tonight we're actually going to be looking at um, Apache web server logs and how we can actually monitor our web server. We're going to have a little fun with it, though. Not only are we going to show you some productive ways to do it, but we're going to actually convert your Apache logs into a game of classic Pong. So you'll be able to actually see those pings happening back and forth in a game of Pong. So... Stick around. Don't go anywhere. This is Category 5 Technology TV. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be a fun show. We've got your viewer questions as I'm well. I'm already having fun. You already? Whoa! Tonight's show, as you know, is brought to you in part by Adzerk. Adzerk.com is the next generation of hey, my eyes are up here. ad serving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't look at my Adzerk. Come on. Okay. Come on, people. All right, uh, with adzerk.com, if you've got a website, you can actually monetize it by generating the world's fastest asynchronous JavaScript ad serving code. Go over to adzerk.com to find out more, get your free account, and sign up today. Also, our mobile site is up and running. Go to m.cat5.tv. There you go. Eric's got his Blackberry. Oh, you ready. always tell me to turn my wireless off. I, I know. I did I know. before we sat down. Does that thing work with anything other than wireless these days? Oh, yeah. There's lots going on in the world of BlackBerry, isn't there? There's lots going on. Yeah. Yeah. How's that working out for you? It's been great. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, good. That's good. I still love my Canadian uh, product. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. All right. That's good. Uh, Archeolus, or how are we pronouncing it? (laughs) Archeolus? Giving BlackBerry some anti-love? Yeah. Oh, he had a BlackBerry for two months and it broke. They're not submergible. They, so you know. They're not good in toilets, apparently, either. I had a friend drop one in there and... It not submergible. It didn't, it, not submergible. It doesn't matter what the liquid is. They do is. not swim well. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a copy of that. Oh, great. Because we need to... I, I want to know what we're brought to you. Uh, here, where are you going? Okay, let's... <laughs> It's been, he's been a while. There, an, there you go, Eric. Okay, can you Eric, with see where this it word? says Eric? Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Right, I do not uh, see where it says Eric. Do you? Uh, right there. There. Yeah. Mobile site m.cat5.tv. Robbie. Right. Okay. The, this so we've whole done paragraph the... right here, 
Eric. Hey, Category5.tv is a member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. And the International Association of Internet Broadcasters. Thanks, Eric. Eric. Welcome back to the show. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Earth. Hey, Welcome. my buddy Chris Hadfield uh, is back on. I saw he uh, landed safely. Fantastic. Yes, indeed. And, you know, he's probably the most exciting astronaut that I think that's ever been up there. Definitely the most uh, tech savvy. And, and musical and, and, and all of the you above. Know, yeah. I had, uh, had a great jam session with he and his brother in a book. 20 other people yeah. one night about oh, several years ago and and uh he's actually quite a good musician it was fun it was mm-hmm. fun and he, he i think he kind of had fun the fact that people were asking him how a song went instead of can you tell me about the space shuttle yeah right <laughs> <laughs> so he had a great night it was we all had a great night cool yeah it's good to have him back here on e pluribus unum I want to say welcome to our new registered viewers on our website this month, uh, or this week, I should say, pardon me. Uh, we've got, I'm going to give it my best, folks. Kekekek. That's their name. How do you spell it? Nice to see you. Thanks for being here. Is that like a like a like one of those laughs? Like, That's I used to work with a lady food. who heard that laugh. That was yes. the laugh? Yes. So there it is. Welcome to the show. <laughs> That's exactly it. Um, Ken L. Welcome Robbie to the show. Robbie is talking Klingon. Lemuriano. Lemuriano. Is that Mew? Muriano. Lemuriano. Welcome to the show. And Jibble Dean Ferrara. Welcome so much to the show. Nice to have you here. You are so much welcome. Eric touched on a very important note tonight. It was an East Latin. Something I that no. we... <laughs> We want to thank uh, Roga Harvey on uh, on Twitter at Roga Harvey for uh, for pointing us in this direction. Bing had a big announcement this week. A Bing and today, announcement. Yeah, Bing. A big. You ready? A big Bing. A Bing, Bing announcement. Bing. Are you ready for this? Now you touched on this a little bit earlier, and so I just want to kind of okay. segue into this. Okay, so we're going to translate from Auto Detect. But we're going to translate to, okay, we're looking at bing.com slash translator. This is the Bing translator. And we know that, okay, Google Translate, we're not so keen on right now because they decided that they're going to charge us $40 every time we want to use it. Whoa, and, so, and, and, and when they're calling me anti-American, I know. I'm not sure I like that translation. I mean, here we are translating or uh, putting books into their reCAPTCHA system for them. And, and this is how they thank us. Wow. So that finds us over on bing.com slash translator. Not translate. This is the Bing translator. Okay. It's an important step in the right direction for technology because for the first time ever on Bing.com slash translator, we can translate to Klingon. Oh, no. This is, this is new today, folks. So, okay, let's, uh, let's give it a go. www.category5.tv. Let's translate that to Klingon. Oh, we're live. Oh, that is scary. Vlachak lech iPhone, cub iPod, <laughs> hot users, hot users. Guys, congratulations. I in, like in Klingon. expression to go along with the Klingon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's kind of appropriate. Cap yeah. untest nech platformsk chak. And just in case you're sarcasm? wondering, and just in case you're wondering, e yong or yu yong vla jao pa pog gel yu pong email or email email. Who who really knows? I love that the menu is even tra- translated. I mean, if you want to, you can interact. You can or you can. I think I hear my mom calling me. I think. Yeah. <laughs> Very impressed with Microsoft for the first time ever. That's a bit harsh, you know. They finally have Bill built a Gates useful technology. Done, come, I know you're a bill basher, but they have a finally he's built a, a technology that we, we, okay, that we, O U I, appreciate and can utilize. And it's going to make everybody want to install the Bing (laughs) Translator app in their mobile device so that when you go to the convention, you know, it's easy enough to to punch it in. How do you like that? I I like where uh, DNLS went to uh, translate. But uh, that's exactly how you said it, by the way. All right. Um, Okay. All right, guys, we've got to take a real quick break. (laughs) 
on that note, <laughs> we will be right back. Don't go anywhere. At Eco Alkalines, we believe you should be able to trust your batteries not just here, but here, here, and here. But with one exception, you should also be able to trust your batteries here. EcoAlkalines are the world's first and only certified carbon neutral battery manufactured to the highest standards of recycling and quality without any trace amounts of harmful chemicals like mercury, lead or cadmium. EcoAlkalines provide performance that rivals leading national alkaline battery brands at a comparable price. Find out more about the EcoAlkalines difference. EcoAlkalines.com this is Category 5 Technology TV. I'm your host, Robbie Ferguson. And I am co-host. Well, haven't you read the emails? Hi, I'm Eric Kidd. <laughs> Whittle no smoke nook neck. That means welcome back. I'm impressed with you. Yes. Well, you know. Very good. I am a geek from way back. Yeah? All know, right. Or to uh, quote uh, young Rachel... Nerdling. Nerdling. I can, I can believe that. I can believe that. Yes. All right. So, Eric, you, you've had experience running Apache LAMP stacks and running servers. Uh -huh. and one of the things that can be difficult or challenging is trying to track down if, you know, if, if you're getting a, a whole lot of traffic and you're wondering what's actually going on. Maybe you're under some form of a DOS attack or somebody's uh, you know, running a script that's accessing your site over and over and over again, something along those lines. So your server logs all of a sudden become really, really helpful. But also, server logs are kind of fun to watch because it helps you to understand how people are using your website. For me, it helps me to see if maybe I've got some dead links throughout the site. Maybe I'm still linking to some old content. We've been around for, you know, we're in our sixth year here. And uh, so it's very possible after 295 episodes that we've yeah. had some files and, uh, and pages on our website that have fallen by the wayside. And, and sometimes I forget. So... Then all of a sudden I look at the server logs and I see, oh, here's all my 404s. And I know that those files need to be either redirected with HT access or whatever I need to do. Or maybe lose the link. Or delete the link altogether or purge it from Google or whatever I need to do. So tonight we're going to look at three different tools. One of them is not so useful but a lot of fun. Uh, one of them is going to be a really helpful way for you to be able to look at your existing Apache logs. And the third is actually going to allow us to monitor our server in real time, which is exceptional for, you know, if you're under a DDoS attack or something like that. Somebody's uh, hacking away at your server and you want to figure out, hey, what's actually going on here? Why have I got such a high CPU usage on my Apache processes? So everything that we want to look at is available directly through apt-get. So it's a part of Debian. Um, so if you're on a Debian-based system, be it Ubuntu server, uh, Ubuntu uh, desktop, or Debian itself. I'm on Point Linux, for example, which is Debian 7. So any of those, you'll be able to install these directly <coughs> from packages. But you can also do that with whatever distribution that you're using. So let's take a quick look. All right, I'm going to jump into my terminal. And you'll see that what I've actually done. What have you done, Lottie? Well, let's see. Okay, so I've got two files there, Apache 1.log and Apache 2.log. I knew that we were going to be doing this presentation, so I actually created a couple of really quick fake Apache logs. Oh, okay. So these just give us some, some logs to work with. So if I actually open this in Pluma, you can see that I've generated random fake IP addresses and made it look like an Apache log. And it is, in every essence, an Apache log, but it's just fake generated information so that we're not revealing anyone's private info here on the show. So the first tool that we want to look at, because, again, it's Nostalgic Gaming Month, so here at Category 5 TV, you know, it's our first priority to make sure that you find interesting nostalgic gaming ways to interact with your server logs. Ah. And speaking of nostalgia, the application that we're going to look at tonight, first and foremost, is called Logstalgia. So all we need Log to do to get nostalgia. that... Logstalgia. Because I'm in a, a, a pseudo-based system. That's not is, geeky at all. <laughs> apt get install, and we're going to go logstalgia, just like that. And then enter your password, and you'll see that I've already got the latest version installed, but that's going to just install logstalgia. So now with my Apache log, I've got uh, apache.1.log, for example. I'll use that one. So we're going to do a couple of things. First of all, now that that's installed, 
logstalgia dash dash help is going to give you a bunch of information about what we can do. You see that it is, you know, it's pretty verbose. You can set the window size, you can go full screen if you want, and all the different settings. So, real quick, what I'm going to do with this logstalgia, and a couple things that I want to do is I want to change the glow intensity. What you do you want? see a doctor about that. Yeah. I'm going to make it a little bit brighter. All right, we're going to go glow duration, and we're going to set that to, say, one second so that it lasts a little. See where I'm getting this information from? Okay. See? This is from the dash dash help. So He's only using the bottom two or three because he can't see up higher. Yeah, I can, I can <laughs> scroll up, though, folks. I can scroll up. Okay, so glow duration one, and we're going to go grow multiplier. See that? Grow dash multiplier. And we're going to set that to something high, like three all right yacht thinks you should be brighter for longer than one second you think you could manage that for a whole show <laughs> well this is a pretty active server log right so you can no, play he wants you to be brighter you can play along play around with these settings uh, notice dash s4 now obviously i know that setting that's just uh, the speed uh, the default is one which is going to be and i don't see it there it's uh, up here somewhere oh there it is speed Okay, so default is one. I'm going to set it to four just so that things move a little bit faster. Because we're talking a game of Pong here. It's got to be interesting. It's got to be fun. And now we need to tell it, okay, where is our log? So I'm going to type apache.one.log. Or you can, you know, if you're on your server, you've got access to it by SSH, you can go uh, var log apache2 access.log, for example. Okay, in my case, I've just got this thing on my desktop that we're using for the sake of the demonstration. And so what we're doing is we're going to actually take that Apache log and we're going to turn it into a, a very useful <laughs> very <laughs> display. Useful. Are you ready for this? This is fun. Hit enter. Oh, what did I do wrong? Option unknown. Grow multiplier. Oh, I was grow. It's glow. Sorry, folks. Yeah. Glow multiplier. Enter. You want to grow your intelligence. There we go. There's my server log. And so what's happening on the left is these are the IP addresses, and they are hitting the server at these files, and the paddle is moving back and forth just like a game of Pong or... Now, can you move the paddle, or is it doing it on... No, it's, doing, it's, it's reading the log, and it's okay. saying, okay, this person is loading episode 292. Ping, and it's going back and forth, and it's showing the wow. file being sent, <coughs> the request being sent to the server, and the file being sent back to the user right how cool is that so it's just it's just like that breakout atari breakout application that we were looking at on google yeah, it's very cool <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's cool. yeah, yeah whatever whatever it, it's true this is the most useless application ever but why is it that i love it you my nerdling friend speak klingon Kapla. And that's been useful for you too, hasn't it? It doesn't have to be useful if you like it. Come on. Bijakla Ekimev. Yeah, what he said. <clears throat> there you go. Did he swear at me? It's happening. <laughs> so that's a visualization of my log files. Like I said, it's absolutely useless as far as anything other than just it looks pretty. It, it looks cool. It looks pretty. I'm going to put it on the screen cool, behind me so that as very people are... Very cool glow. Uh, yeah. Well, that's things. why I set up the, the grow. The, <laughs> the, <laughs> the gro glow. That was... Never mind. No. There you go. Yes. Okay. So n then we need to... Okay. Obviously, that's that's not a use, useful tool. It's just kind of fun. Uh, we want to actually be able to monitor our, and look at our server logs and figure out, okay, what's actually happening on our server. So let's close that down. Oh, and down there we go. And Flame of, flames of glory. <laughs> Just like that. Okay, so next tool that I might want to look at is really, really helpful. It's called Go Access, and again, it's available in your app get repositories. App get go uh, install go access like that. Okay? Not necessarily all typed in in that order. But. Mine's uh, already the newest version. Well, you saw what I typed. I Pseudo saw. Yeah, I know. App get install go access. And if you're on Debian, pure Debian, you would instead go su, enter, enter your root password so that you're a super user, and then just type apt get install go access. No need for the sudo, right? Because you're then su'd in. Okay, so with go access, this is a different 
can of worms altogether. It's not for fun. This is for functionality. So, But a can of worms can be fun. Sorry. Oh. There you go. Go access dash F is the command. But again, you can go dash dash help. Or no, I guess you can't. Just type go access. And there you go. You do receive some help. You'll see that this one is not as verbose, but it does prompt you for the file. And a couple other little things. But So in our case, we're just going to go go access dash F and then Apache dot two dot log. I'm just going to use that one because I have some referrers and things that I've added to that to that Refers. one. So, yeah. So then when I run that, now you notice that it's running in a terminal window. Okay, so that's this one's text based. So this one works really really great on say a server. Excellent way to be able to check out your Apache logs because it's Absolutely. on your server. So when I push dash da, uh, dash F, of course you may again take that and say var log apache2 access dot log right could be that in our case we're just going to access this one okay and that's on your desktop that one's just on my yeah. desktop yeah and i've <coughs> seeded to the to the desktop okay so i can use my cursors I like my up and down arrows to move around and you'll see a couple of things here Unique visitors per day, one is number one, okay? Uh, requested files is number two. Requested static files is number three. So just to give you a real quick tutorial on how to use this, I'm defaulted to number one. So if I press O, it's going to open number one, and then I press Q to, to close that. So see, it's the same as what's up there in the top under number one. It's the same kind of information, but it's going to give me everything instead of just the top, what is that, five or six, six. Right. So the number two is the requested file. So all I have to do is press two and then the letter O. So two O. And it's opened requested files. And now I can actually scroll through here and I can find out more information about what files are being requested, how much bandwidth those are consuming, and things like that. Helpful, 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 right? Very so helpful. it shows me all the links on the website and, and how people are navigating the site or what files they're opening. So then I can continue to scroll down and I can look at okay what files are being requested that are you know static files so I press 3O and it gives me a list of all the static files that are being opened and this can be helpful too uh, to be able to find out you know if you're being exploited because sometimes one of the ways that you'll be you know someone will attempt to exploit your server is to try to open files on your server that don't exist they might be looking for files and so you might see them in there or you might see them in uh, if we scroll down to number five you'll see uh, 404 responses which is not found so you see that okay I do have some that are missing but you notice here that here are some images that it's looking for but I don't have those images nor have I ever had those images and yet they're giving a 404 so it tells me that somebody is actually testing my server to see if those files are there why would someone do that why would somebody do that because they know say Joomla or WordPress or whatever they know the file structure the, of the of the application so if somebody has WordPress installed you pretty much know that there's going to be a WP dash content folder so you can kind of try that folder to find out if this person is running WordPress ah. or in Joomla it might be you know a certain file within Joomla or whatever application it is because they know how those you know the file structure so whatever add underscore gray underscore pins dot ping is that file is a part of something that they're testing for and the reason that they would test for that is they might know that okay well this particular application has an exploit that would allow me to exploit this server ah. so that now points <coughs> me to okay well maybe now I need to grep through my log for add underscore gray underscore pins find the IP address of who it is that's trying to access this file that doesn't exist because they're obviously trying to do something and then block that IP with IP tables for example right so that's that's a couple of the options that we can use that for so you can scroll around through here up and down um, it, it gives you everything from IP addresses that are accessing the server status codes on your server and again you just press the number that is associated with it so if I just press 90 it's going to give me all the status codes for example and then we press Q and that closes the window that's open because ah, it's all okay. done within the uh, 
the terminal, terminal. right? One little thing that might be a problem for you is because, let's say, you know, for example, I'm running this through a termi terminal e emulator on a GUI, so I'm not actually really at the terminal. I'm running it through this, right? Mate terminal. So if I want to press F1, for example, it, it doesn't do anything, but you see that F1 is supposed to be help. Oh. So that, and okay, now it's brought up mate terminal help. Well, that's no good to me. But that's how it's, that's what's going to happen, right? Because you see, F1 is actually allocated to contents for mate terminal. So what we'll actually do is we're going to push that super user button, which is the uh, the window key. I don't know if you can see that, Heather, but the, it usually looks like a, a window key on your keyboard. So if we hold that button in within the terminal, and then we press the F1 key, now you'll see what's going to happen is a lot different. It actually brings up the terminal-based oh. help. So now I've got a way to actually send the keystrokes, even though t typically I wouldn't be able to do that. So that can be very, very helpful just to know that little tidbit because maybe you want to get access to the help. Maybe you want to be able to... Uh, sometimes I found there was another reason that I had to press during the setup. I had to press like F10, something like that, which oh. brings up the file menu in, in uh, the application, I think. So that just uh, makes it a lot easier. So that is Go Access. Pretty cool. Q, Q to quit. And then the final tool that I want to look at tonight, you're going to love this one. This I'm going to love this one. You're going to love this one. Is the ability to actually monitor your server in real time. This is where it gets fun, so get ready to bring up our site. Get ready. Just have a sip of my coffee there. Okay. The next tool I want to look at is called Apache Top. Now you've all heard of Top and HTOP and all those kind of tools. Well, Apache Top is kind of a similar tool for monitoring your Apache logs. So sudo apt get install Apache Top. Enter. You'll see I've already installed it. I've got the newest version. <clears throat> oh, no, I haven't installed it. <laughs> Following packages will oh. be removed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch Do that. Do you want to continue? What is it going to remove? Well, I don't know. I'm going to say no to this. Zero. I know why that is. Because I'm running this on my local computer. I don't have Apache installed uh, on, my, on my computer here. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, I'm going to remote into my server. And we're not going to mention any of this stuff on air, how I'm accessing the server or anything. Deal? I didn't see you. You didn't see me. And we didn't <laughs> see a thing. All right. Let's get access here. Okay. There. Okay, so on my server, <clears throat> what we're going to do is, okay, like I was showing you, and this is a Debian server, so I'm actually, I SU'd to get here, um, so I don't need to do sudo. So apt-get install, and we're going to go Apache top. And here you'll notice that, yes, I already do have, in fact, have the newest version. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go Apache top dash Q. And actually, let's again start with dash dash help so you know what I'm actually doing. So help me. Right? Okay, so there's how you get your help. So dash Q is going to keep query strings just so that they stay up on the screen. Uh, and uh, so we're going to go Apache top dash Q dash T. And it's an uppercase T for the time that you want to hold things. I'll just put in 3600. Uh, I'm not sure if that's, yeah, seconds. So it just gives us a little extra time so that they don't fly off the screen. Uh, and then dash F, and then your file location. So that might be for you, var log. Yeah, what's that, like 10 minutes or yeah, something like that? Uh, so var log, Apache 2, whatever. I'm actually going to point this to my live uh, server log. So again, we're not going to show that on the screen just for uh, confidential uh, confidentiality reasons. There we go. Okay, so with that, now it's loaded up what looks like a top. Uh, it's a bit like a top kind of uh, layout. We can see how many requests there are and what's going on, how much uh, bandwidth we're using. So everybody go hit our website, category5.tv and what we're going to actually start to see here, if you want to bring that up and post a jot, if you can post a link in the show notes or in the uh, chat log, uh, chat room there, people can click on it. You'll see there are three people there just hit the upper, you know, the slash so the first page 
um, and all the you know so there's some more people somebody logging in so I can actually monitor this in real time and I'm seeing okay how many processes what's going on we've got 29 requests going on right now it shows us how much you know how many resources we're using how much memory how much uh, bandwidth per second and there are the files that are actually open hello Ravi F would have given a 404 but hello <laughs> Everybody's hitting on some uh, some weird what files. Is this so. weird yeah. thing over here. Yeah, what's that? <laughs> so you'll see now if I actually bring up our website, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually participate in this. And if you watch those logs, I'm gonna go to interact, ask a question. And if we watch over here, you're gonna instantly see somebody's clicked on ask a question there at the bottom. So how neat is that? So uh, anywhere that you click, it's actually going to um, log that on my screen. So it's a real-time way to be able to monitor it. And I was mentioning at the top of the show that this is a great way to be able to figure out what's going on if you're under attack. And the reason for that is you can start to see the, what's happening. You'll see here that right now somebody is opening uh, several files. Um, here's one, for example. And let's see here. If I, I, I do that sometimes, I hit Control C, which closes an application. Oh, right. I tweeted that. You don't want to hit Control C. Yeah, it's all. Who is the clown who decided that? I, the... Who is it? And that's why I and I keep doing that. Okay, let's. So now let's actually go to. I want to see if this actually exists, and you'll see that there's somebody is hitting this page over and over again. Postcard map, and it's it's not found. That doesn't exist on my server. And there's other stuff that, you know, sometimes you'll see that people are trying to hit files. And so you wonder, okay, well, what's going on there? And then you can dig a little deeper. And in fact, on the weekend, I had some really, really weird things happening because I saw that in my logs, people were actually loading other websites. So I started seeing uh, outside websites coming up in my server log. And okay, well, that's not possible because everything's relative. Right, so you see, as people are opening files, I've got slash ask a question, slash articles list, for example. So for me to suddenly start seeing HTTP colon slash slash and then a website and some kind of weird code there, I realize, okay, somebody's trying to do something here on my server. So I looked a little bit deeper and I realized, oh, they're actually um, using a, a backdoor in Apache, which is allowing them to proxy their way through my server and be able to make requests. So instantly locked that down and uh, got that fixed because, you know, you don't want that. Coffee is cold. Is that Eric? Yeah, yeah I just thought I'd, I wanted to see something. <laughs> so that's, that's a, you know, really cool tool. I'm loving being able to use Apache Top. It's a really cool way to just, at a glance, leave your server log up and running. And uh, you, you want to set up permissions on your Apache uh, access log and be able to... Um, to be able to access it without being super user, for example. Uh, but you know. are a super user. Yeah. How I much know. wood would woodchuck chuck? If woodchuck could chuck wood. <laughs> so that's that. That's Apache Top. And uh, as I mentioned, we've looked at Go Access and Logstalgia. I hope that those are able to help you uh, when you're administering your server, looking at your Apache logs, trying to figure things out. And, <coughs> you know, you watch those logs. <coughs> I'm going to notice over the next couple of days now, aren't I? That you gonna are going to see some, gonna be some strange weird stuff. stuff. There's going to be some really weird stuff. Secret codes embedded through 404 links. There you have it. And let's see if this works. What are you up to now? I don't know. What's he doing? No, nope, that didn't work. Okay. <laughs> All right. Happy birthday, Rachel. How sweet. Okay. All right. Thanks, everybody. Are we having fun yet? Are you ready for the news? I am ready. Are you ready? Oh, he is ready. Question. All right. Well, here are the top stories from the Category 5.TV newsroom. Awesome. YouTube has launched a trial scheme for paid channels on its website. Under the pilot program, a small number of content makers will offer the channels for subscriptions starting from around 99 cents a month. Each channel will offer a free 14-day trial, and many will have discounted annual rates. 
Although the initial 53-channel lineup is fairly niche, one expert suggested the move might ultimately squeeze some smaller rivals out of the market. YouTube, Mm -hmm. which is owned by Google, said the launch was part of an effort to enable content creators to earn revenue for their creativity, which we can respect. But what do you think? Would you pay 99 cents a month to watch Category5.tv? Share your thoughts by emailing live at Category5.tv. It's an interesting thought, eh? Because I I think we... (coughs) Everybody's gotten used to YouTube being free. You just go and you find what you want yeah. and you watch it, and it's always been free. But what uh, what happens if? I mean, for us, I mean, to give you the opposite perspective, I think you know to think that you got to pay for YouTube is you know people are getting a little bit you know upset about that. They haven't forced it on us or anything like that. It's but it's it's becoming available. So if if let's say you were to pay us a dollar a month. So 25 cents an episode, right? Think about what a difference that would make to the quality of the show, being able to upgrade cameras, being able to purchase what we need to make the show as good as it can possibly be. We've got to, you know, we'll probably um, get a coffee maker that can go right next to your... Nice. One of those ones that you just, like, put yeah. your cup in and it just... Yeah, and it's done. Then they can't complain about it. Well, what's fun in that? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, I'll find something else to I'll find about. something to whine about. Yeah. Well, back to Chris. Actually, we're not talking about Chris here. But oh, okay. The International Space Station is switching from Windows to Linux for functions which require increased in-house control. Makes sense. The decision was made by Keith Shavala of United Space Alliance. Uh, a NASA contractor who oversees the writing and integration of software for the space station's laptop network. Hmm. The network is used by astronauts on a daily basis for location information, inventory control, and multimedia. Web streaming their <coughs> little uh, space concerts? Exactly. Mm. <laughs> Ground control to Major Tom. <laughs> uh, the network is used by astronauts. I already said that, didn't I? Mr. Yeah. Shavala says, we migrated key functions from Windows to Linux because we needed an operating system that was stable and reliable, one that would give us in-house control. So if we needed to patch, adjust, or adapt, we could. As well as laptops, the humanoid robot called Robonaut, is that like Robinot? Robonaut, I, will I like also it. be running Linux. Hmm. It will be taking over some of the human astronauts' responsibilities, both dangerous and mundane, and can be controlled from aboard the station. Can I look at that quote again? I really like that. This guy is a professional for NASA, contracted. He says, we migrated key functions from Windows to Linux because we needed an operating system that was stable and reliable. That's a bit harsh. That's a little bit daring to say something like that publicly and when you're in that kind of a position publicly and then we, we can say it we repeat we it. can say it i'm going to claim well, that for my own we switched to linux from windows because we wanted stability and no viruses and what else i mean awesomeness is that is that a feature <laughs> if you read the box of linux would awesomeness actually be the feature i don't know i think so did your linux come in a box <laughs> Sorry. Just the DL. IBM. Mm. International Business Machines. Is that. No. IBM opened a center today for computing systems in Beijing to help customers and outside software engineers develop business applications for the open source Linux operating system. Nice. The facility will aid creation of programs for big data, cloud, mobile, and social business computing and represents a sizable investment. Colin Paris, general manager of IBM Power Systems, said in an interview. He declined to say how much the company spent or how many workers were employed. IBM Chief Executive Officer Ginny Rometty is focusing on profitable businesses, including data analysis and cloud computing, to maintain growth. She said services that help customers mine troves of information to make better decisions are the company's biggest priority. Hmm. The Beijing Center is the company's first to focus on Linux applications for IBM's Power Systems brand servers. The center will collaborate with Linux distributors, distributors Red Hat and SUSE. I always find it awesome when, uh, and sorry for having the logo up. More awesome. There. I find it more awesome when a, a commercial, uh, like a big company, backs Linux with a commercial stance, you know, Canonical did it. Um, so now to hear IBM is doing software for business 
for Linux. Mm -hmm. That's a big step. I mean, that's a good push for people who who think, oh, Linux is just for hobbyists. Well, no, it's not. But people will say that because they don't know any better. So, very cool. All right. Free Wi-Fi access is to be introduced at 25 of Scotland's busiest railway stations by the middle of next year. The move is the latest stage in the Scottish government's plan to ensure travelers have free wireless internet across the rail network by 2019. ScotRail began introducing free access on its flagship Edinburgh to Glasgow route last year and is now being rolled out across express trains. The Scottish government has provided... £250,000 to fit Wi-Fi at the stations. That's some really heavy cabling. That is. Get the full <laughs> stories at Category5.tv newsroom slash newsroom. The Category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash and Heather Bailey Brown with contributions by our community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of on-air mention, email newsroom at Category5.tv. For the Category5.tv newsroom, I'm Eric Kidd. Thanks, Eric. Tonight's show is brought to you in part by NetTalk. Find out more about them at cat5.tv slash phone. You can eliminate the need for a wireless uh, wireless text plan from your cell phone provider. You can upgrade your NetTalk Duo account with the NetTalk text plan for unlimited text messaging to USA and Canada. Check out cat5.tv slash phone and start saving money today. Also, we still got Netflix as a sponsor here at Category 5. Get it while it's hot. You get a free month at cat5.tv slash Netflix. And every time somebody <coughs> registers, every time somebody registers for that free account at Netflix, uh, they do support and they love Category 5 Technology TV. What's not to love? I know. I know. And what's so not to love you, about a for free signing month of Netflix? Free month of Netflix. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. That's what free I'm unlimited about. movies and shows. It's a no-brainer all good cool all right uh I, w- I would like to point us toward we've got very little time for questions tonight so we'll grab uh you know we'll start with that question there okay <laughs> well in fact here is a question from henry hey henry hey, hey guys hey i have finally decided to pursue my goal and become a famous youtuber my yes. main content welcome is to going the ranks to be... of famous youtubers <laughs> a tuber, isn't that like a potato? Sorry. Very, My main content is going to be tutorials okay. for many different media programs. Little animated and real-time short films, and of course, gaming. For the gaming side, of I was course. wondering if you could re- recommend the best way you would record off uh, PS3, Wii, and or other console systems. Okay. I have frapped for my PC, and it works beautifully. Okay. Do I need to buy an HD PVR, or can I just somehow hook them up to my PC? Thanks, guys. P.S. Hi, Mom. Heather Bailey Brown. Heather Bailey Brown! She's waving <laughs> at Backstage Pass. Hey, good to see you. Okay, I'm just checking real quick uh, what we've got here at cat5.tv slash bh, because that's the best place to shop. Uh, okay, so Fraps is a great software tool to be able to capture DirectX enhanced 3D gaming in Windows. Oh, it looks like we. Oh no, that's not what we want. Um, so it's it's really cool because it uh, allows you to capture those Windows games. But what do you do when you got the PS3? You can get something like a Blackmagic Intensity Pro, uh, but it's probably not ideal for you because. Um, it's designed for basically TV broadcasting. So if the devices that you're plugging into it are not to perfect spec, you know, like perfect HD for- form-fitting video, right? it's just going to be a black screen, if that makes sense. So if the resolution is off a little bit or whatever. I have found the card. Okay, so what you need... What you need... Is the Aver Media... Is that Aver? Aver Media? I don't know. Aver Media. It doesn't matter how I say it because let me read. Because it's anything the descri- but average. Let me read the description from the back of the box and you'll realize it doesn't matter how we pronounce things. Stream now. It's your showtime. Make yourself celebrity of the world that matters. That matters. Stream your gameplay and let the world see what you can do. 
Join thousands of your kind and top the rank. <laughs> Aver Media, Apple Media, blah, blah, blah. Doesn't really matter. Can the card the, works the, the great. Klingon? I can. I can oh. now. Is it on the box? The reason that you want to go with this one is because it's, it's dirt cheap, and it's going to get you uh, compressed input from HDMI or component from your PS3 or whatever other device. And if the resolution sent to this is a little bit off, doesn't matter. It will still broadcast the video. It just might have a black bar on the side or something like that. So it works better for that kind of stuff. Check out the minimum specs. It's compatible with Windows 7, probably 8, I don't know. Uh, and I've found it here. At, if you go to cat5.tv slash bh, and I'm going to give you the code for it. Let's see if this works. A-V-M-T-V-G-B-Cast. I think that's the one. Let's give it a try. So I go to cat5.tv slash bh. Do a quick search for that. Until the 17th. And there we go. Yeah. Okay. All right. So click on it. And it's only 114 bucks. Right? And B&H is great. So what's great about this, it's compressed video. So your computer uh, doesn't have to be as killer in order to capture video. That's important because with a uh, Blackmagic Intensity Pro, you're looking at uncompressed 1080p video. So what you're getting is this stream of video that you have to have such a powerful computer in order to encode. And so it, it you know, it's you've you've got to upgrade Not for everything. the average bear. Yeah. <clears throat> this one here has an onboard chip that compresses the video on its way into the computer so that what you're receiving in the computer is is still 1080p but it's compressed. So it's much less data. You don't have to process it on the CPU. It's already processed in the capture card. So check that one out. I'll also see about uh, posting a link in the show notes for episode number 295. Uh, so watch for that actual link, and it will go directly to that product. All right. Thanks All for the right. question. we got time for a couple of questions. All right. Did you want to direct me in a certain direction? No. No? I wanted to, I, you know, that's, <laughs> that's silly, but... Uh, son okay. of one of our volunteers. So, Well, here is one from Mihal. Hey, Mihal. Hello, Robbie. Hey. I have a problem with my computer. I use Zorin 6. I cannot use mobile internet. Uh-oh. Meaning USB flash for permanent root password. And when I type my own and that of the internet gives the wrong root password. Oh, dear. Where did I go and wrong? This is a tough thing because I don't, I don't use Wi-Fi on... I haven't used it on... Z is it Zorn or is it... Zorn 6? Hmm. Hmm. I would suggest... I'm going to have to suggest that you get into their forums and, and see if anyone there has had bad experience with it and can help you. The only thing you could try that I could suggest with any application in Linux is run the tool from your terminal so that you can see what errors are being generated. Um, so, for example... I don't know how to really demonstrate this because I don't use wireless cards, right? So, but if I have a tool that is, you know, say that it's my configuration editor, right? So if you're using GNOME, I can right click and edit menus. And we're just using configuration editor as an example. But under system tools, you see configuration editor, right click on it and hold in right click and let go on properties. And I can see that the tool is called mate conf dash editor in this example. So now I'm going to go into terminal and I'm going to type in mate da uh, conf dash editor. And that's going to open that tool. But now if anything r goes bad with this tool or there's an error, it's actually going to spew out the error in my terminal. Well, so let's make it. Make it, an error. Yeah, I wish I knew how with <laughs> mate conf editor. But that might point in a direction because then you're going to have some kind of output from the application itself. So you just have to find out what the executable is to run. Sorry, I can't be more help there. Um, but uh, hopefully the forums for uh, for Zorin OS will be of help to you. All Hate right. to give up, but I don't know much about it. I don't use it. Hey, our uh, buddy Robert from Melbourne, Australia is hey, uh, sending another question here. All right. Hi, Robbie and Eric. I have just switched over to Point Linux and have had a few issues, which most of them I have managed to sort out. Great. The one that I have been unable to fix is how to get Steam working. 
I have tried a few different methods that I have found on some websites without any luck. Any suggestions or any viewers got Steam working under Point Linux? Thanks. Hmm. I haven't tried it yet. Good day, mate. Let me just quickly. <coughs> I'm, I'm guessing that you're on 64-bit. Robert, is that the case? Are you on 64-bit uh, Point Linux? I'm not getting anything in the chat room from Robert. Let us know. Hey, are you out there? The architecture of Debian has changed quite a bit in Debian 7, and that's part of how, uh, you know, that's what Point Linux is. So, and I'm, I'm honestly still kind of learning my way around how that all works, but... Maybe this would be a good question. Maybe I could bring it up again next week when I have a bit of time to prepare an answer. Um, because I have run into it as well. Um, so can you let us know, are you running the 64-bit? Is that what the problem is? I think that would be the, the first thing that I would check. And just watch out that you don't, don't go through old tutorials that are for Debian 6, right? The command that we need to do is dpkg space dash dash add dash architecture space i386 and then do an apt get update um, I can post information about that in the in the show notes for episode number 295 basically command looks like this and all it does is it adds the ability to to run those 32-bit um, binaries because remember and this is why, why I think that you're on 64-bit is that um, Steam is not available for 64-bit oh. yet. So you've got to install the 32-bit version. So that can be a little bit of a problem. And because we're switching over... See, before we used to install the IA32 libs, right? Um, to be able to get 32-bit access. Now we don't do it that way because it's a newer way of doing things. The architecture has changed. So I would try that and then go through the regular steps of installing the 32-bit program and it should work just fine. How new is uh, Steam? Steam is pretty new. I mean, we were looking at a, on the show just uh, you know a month or so ago. Um, so it, is it available for previous? Yes. Version? Oh. oh yeah, but um, Debian seven and Point Linux just came out. Debian ah. seven was stable on Saturday, okay. so uh, of Saturday of last week. So, um, so very very new. I was a little unstable on Saturday. Uh, I know. You know. <laughs> what can you do? What can you do? Do we have uh, All right. a short one? Thanks for the question, Robert. Well, and, and if that helped, if that just was the answer, then let us know. Um, but that's what I'm thinking anyway. All right. Well, let's see. What do we have here? I don't know. What do we this have? This is a question for off air. Oh, no. That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter? Thanks, Robbie. I got. <laughs> he reads the stuff he's not supposed to read. <laughs> oh, here's a. Oh, look he at this. Oh, and here's his IP address, and here's his email address. And what else? No. What was Danny saying? You said it didn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't. No, it doesn't matter that it says that it's for off air. Oh, it doesn't. No. I think it does. If he sent okay. an email. <laughs> he sent an email. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Robbie. I got handbrake loaded, and it is working. How much do I owe you? I'm so glad he ruined the joke. <laughs> anyway, my coffee's cold. Last week we were talking about handbrake on the air, and uh, our good friend uh, Danny had sent in the question, uh, one one man, and we were able to nail it. And unfortunately, I had some mic issues there at the end of the show. Glad you were able to make it out. Glad that it was uh, that it worked for you. Um, and if you'd like to donate, it's cat 5tv slash c. That was not a part of my script. But no. cat5.tv slash c if you want to throw the, the yes, dollar. Yes, Eric dollar is spelled with a c. Yeah, don't don't put it with a k because it'll go to the wrong person. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Well, that that's all the time that we have. I think I'm gonna keep reading questions. Yeah. Yep. Our mics are gonna all of a sudden stop working, so they cut us off at eight o'clock. I mean, YouTube is just like, that's it, shut it down. That's it. Yeah. I'm fine. You like that? Actually, YouTube said, stick around. I just got a message uh, from YouTube. YouTube just said, stick around. We're going to actually have a hangout after the show. A hangout. A hangout. So if you've got your webcam handy, stick around. Say hi. Uh, we're going to get Eric another coffee. Uh, yeah, last week was his birthday, so this time around it's going to be a very special coffee. Very special and, uh, coffee. And we're going to hang out in the chat room and, uh, and in the Google Plus hangout, which you can find at cat5.tv slash G plus G P L U S G plus, and that's cat5.tv slash G plus, not category. Uh, cool. 
Did it? That's all the time we have. Good. Thanks, That's everybody. It. Hope you had fun. Send us your here. questions. Live at category5.tv is where you want to email us uh, through the week and get your questions in. And uh, we appreciate that. Don't forget, Chris is coming in next week. Awesome. And I always point out. She's, she's way favorite. more charming and better looking than yeah, I. Absolutely. So. I have to agree. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, folks. See ya. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Bye. Hope you enjoyed the show. Category 5 TV broadcasts live from Barrie, Ontario, Canada every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. If you're watching this on demand or through cable TV, check out the local showtimes in your area at Category5.tv and find out when you can watch live and interact in the community chat room. Category 5 is a production of Prodigy Digital Solutions and is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 2.5 Canada. 